Good morning, Girl Scouts. This is Miss Jessie coming in from Girl Scouts of Virginia Skyline Council. Welcome back to our Junior Flowers Badge Workshop. Today we are going to focus on step three, which will involve learning a little bit more about how flowers can help people and animals. I hope you all enjoy. Okay, girls. So we are actually out in my backyard in my garden and we're heading out here to learn a little bit more about flowers and how they're going to help uh, humans and animals. So this here is an anemone and it is a Japanese flower. It's a bulb and first and foremost I just want to explain that flowers through photosynthesis um, create oxygen and absorb carbon dioxide. So if you go ahead, go ahead and uh, just pause really quickly and take a nice deep breath in. And exhale. You're actually taking in the waste product of plants, which is oxygen. So not only do flowers produce oxygen, but they also sift through toxins in the soil. And they pull moisture from deep within the soil and pre prevent erosion. They conserve water and they're drought tolerant. In addition to providing oxygen and sifting out toxins and conserving water, many plants are a really great food source for animals, such as birds and small mammals. While flowers benefit the world and the environment in so many ways, the last example I'm gonna focus on is pollinators, nectars, and honey. Okay, girls. So the next thing that we're gonna discuss is pollinators. And pollinators are extremely important in reproduction and growth process of flowers. Bees are attracted to flowers, essential oils, and the petals. So I'm zooming in here and you should see these flower petals. And they're covered with oils that bees are super attracted to. And the reward is really truly the nectar and it's located at the base inside of the flower so deep down in that little tiny hole um, that is where the nectar resides without flowers we would have fewer pollinators without pollinators we would have less fruit fewer flowers mean less nectar Less flowers and less pollinators mean less honey. Now that we have a better understanding of the role that flowers play in the environment, we're gonna head inside and do a dissection of a flower and investigate the reproductive organs of the flower. All right, so we are going to take a look at some of the parts and uh, reproductive uh, organs of the flower. So first we're going to start with the three main pieces. I've got some tweezers here so you all can find some at home uh, if you have some in a cabinet lying around somewhere and then I also used a paper clip um, and just kind of unrolled it for my pointer. So um, this here is our stem or phylum and then these little guys here which kind of look like little flower petals but there are leaves um, this is called the sepal and then our petals so these are our basic three basic pieces here I am going to clear away the petals so we can take a look at what is actually inside of our tiger lily. This is a tiger lily. Just wiggle it around like that. And now you should see the male, female, male and female parts of the tiger lily. Right, hopefully you guys can see this, but what's really cool about flowers is 
Every plant has both female and male reproductive organs. And what we're gonna look at here, and hopefully you can see, I'm gonna take my tweezers and separate that. Do you see that little green piece here with the red piece? The green piece here um, is actually the ovary. So this is the female um, reproductive organ and the red part here is called the style. And then on the tip of the style is the stigma. And this entire piece is called the pistil, which represents again the female uh, organs. And then these little guys, these yellow um, long pieces here are actually uh, called the stamen. And so the stamen represents uh, the filament and the pollen that you can see here, this little, uh, little kind of T-shaped piece and the anther. And that is your male reproductive organ. And these two produce seeds in every plant. Hi ladies. Okay, last part will be step four, which will include having fun with flowers. And I thought it might be kind of cool to make some jewelry out of our tiger lily pe or petals. That way um, we're not really wasting any material that we used when we did the dissection. So what I've got here is a, well, let me start with my rubber band, just a recycled rubber band that I cut in half, um, a hole puncher, and then uh, my petals from whatever flower that you're going to dissect. And so you're just going to take your hole puncher and punch a hole, and I've already pre-cut all of my pieces. So. Once you do that, you will string through your petals to make a bracelet or a necklace, some sort of jewelry. Hi! All right, I've finished. Here's my corsage. I made a corsage. And it's so beautiful. It'd be perfect for camp or, um, well, right now we're not at camp, but just any backyard uh, gathering, maybe with your family, or you can make a necklace. I hope you enjoyed this, ladies. Thank you so much for joining us for the Junior Flower Workshop. Stay safe.